So let's get going again. We finished on market research. And then now we're just speaking to uh, customer behavior. And here we just have two, three slides. Yes. Are you, are you going to upload these? These, these highlights are not good. I thought I'd give you the honest answer. No, I, I can I can upload it. Uh, you're just missing. Remind me. But it makes no difference. Then. You're going to go to them, right? Make, make every difference. You guys are going to pass you see the disclaimers now, I'm getting to, huh? <laughs> so it's fine, just remind me, you know, I'm doing pretty well. But also, I think when we started the module, we were told like full attendance to get another 10% plus I have. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming to study with you guys, you guys have it nice. You guys have it nice. <laughs> So, so, guys, let me get through this and then obviously release you guys. So, yeah, we have, uh, when looking at customer behavior, what we want is to establish the behavioral patterns. And this is why data is such a big topic currently, you know? And this is why, um, you know, the whole issue of security is also such a thing, right? Because we don't want our data in the wrong people's hands because they then can take advantage of us. Because if they can predict our behavior, then they know how to trigger us in certain ways to obviously make purchase decisions. Okay. So what we're learning here is very, very relevant for what's going on in our world today. So behavioral uh, behavior patterns of decision making units directly involve the purchase and the use of products. So it's not only just the purchase, we also want to know how quickly does Aubrey Get through a bottle of shampoo. Is this bottle of shampoo? This is how I know you guys are tired. <laughs> anyway, anyway, at least one of my students was happy. But so this is relevant information because then they know when should we start advertising again about this product, right? When it's finished, we should start reminding the person that hey, by the way, this. Shampoo, you need shampoo. And guess what? Next thing you know, you're in the store, right? Purchasing. All right, this is a very loose example, but you guys get the point. All right, that's why the data is relevant. And then, including the decision making uh, processes, preceding and determining the behavior patterns. Okay, right? Then we have customer behavior consists of overt acts. Things that you can observe, right? Walking into a store, even the whole the CC cameras, CCTV cameras, all right? If they observe those cameras and watch customers, they can begin to see, oh, this is the behavior, right? But then there's also another aspect to it, and I'll let you speak just now. There's also another aspect to it. There's the behavior that they don't see, right? And that's the covert processes, the stuff that's going on in your head. Okay, that's what I wanted to mention. Yes. So, looking at behavior, this is how they create the line when you go to tell. Mm -hmm. So they have, you know, all these we shall be that you two are told when you have your yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yes. So yeah. the, the the nice little food treats that you can yes. purchase, yes. snacks and so forth. Um, that's called the impulsive purchase. That's exactly, exactly. exactly. There was a, there's a name for those things. Is it convenient? You mean product? Like convenient? I know it's impulsive buying, but there's yes. a name for those these products. Okay? It's 100% that. All right? You're waiting and you'll be like, the chocolate would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's the best. This is where the stuff is coming from. And others are already like, I need to do better in life. <laughs> you can see. Okay. Right, then you've got customer behavior, all right, uh, again, customer behavior can be influenced individually and also as a group. And this is why we have what we call influencers on Instagram. If CR7 wears it, then 
all of us who love playing soccer, what do we want to go and do? We also now want to go and buy that same product, right? It's like these people give a stamp of approval, and the next thing, there's a whole fleet of people that obviously then go on to do it. So that's group factors. How do these group factors? And this is why when somebody, a celebrity that we know, maybe says something that they shouldn't have, brands, endorsements, leave them. Because they know that negativity surrounding them, people will not want to be associated with anything related to them. So we need to distance ourselves from them. This is making sense. Okay? So it works both ways. All right? Individual decision making is usually straightforward. Okay? Because it's like, what does Aubrey like? What, you know, would entice him? Okay? He likes the gym a lot. So chances are he's going to like fitness gear. All right, that's an individual thing. He doesn't need anyone influencing, okay? Those are the things they want to pick up on. And here you've got diagram and now you've got a breakdown of different factors when looking at an individual, different factors when looking at group factors, all right? And by the way, these things are non-exhaustive. The list can keep going. So don't think that this is it, all right? We could also look at church, church group. Think of how influential religion is in our decision making, regardless of what religion we might be. All right? So I'm just illustrating. Uh, we, can, we can go on with these lists for forever and a day. Then there you go. These all influence the decision making process. And then finally, the choice is made based off of the marketing offering, right? The, the communication that we provided to you through our marketing. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Four influences in any organization. So also they're now speaking to organizational buying decision or decisions, the environment, the organization itself, buying group, and then obviously individual buyer. The decision making process moves through five phases. Okay, and this is what they're speaking to over here. Phase one awareness of an unsatisfied need or problem. You know, the funny thing is sometimes you were doing just fine. Just, just fine, right? You had nothing that you needed. And then suddenly you see an advertisement and you're like, that would be nice. And the next thing is, I don't need that. But you were doing that fine, right? So we need to, to, to know how to pitch our stuff to our consumers, right? Whether as an organization or as individuals, so that they can begin to be an aware of a unsatisfied need or problem, all right? Sometimes that is almost as close as creating a problem that actually we need something to think about. Phase two, gathering of information on how best to solve the problem. I see this thing costs so much. How do I go about actually paying for this? Evaluation of the possible solutions. Okay, there's that brand, that brand, and that brand. Okay, but they all provide the same item. Decision on a course of action or purchase. Do I buy, buy, I take a lot? Because it's typically cheaper. And when I have to walk into a store, or do I go to the mall and make a purchase? Maybe I can also get some advice on the product because I'm not so I'm not so uh, informed on which would be the best tablet to buy. All right, then uh, last, uh, actually there's six phases, isn't it? So that's number five. Number five is post-purchase evaluation. Was this a good purchase? Was this a bad purchase? All right, and some of these things, oh, so it is five, sorry. Why well, I don't know why I said six. You may have seen this process somewhere. Might not be your first time actually seeing that. Yes, going back to when you said the competition exists. Yes, sure. Let's go back. Yeah. Where you were speaking of organization of a possible solution, creating creating a problem problem that is solving a problem. Um, would we say that that is what's um, accelerating uh, production in terms of the medical sector? Mm. Uh, certain solutions 
accepted pay in order to continue exploiting people out of money. For example, HIV, cancer. Well, why is not HIV if I can still keep selling ARDs? You know, why is not cancer? You know, I can still charge people for money. Mm. So we can say that's also another example in more depth for possible solutions. Uh, so your your illustration is a bit out of context. I'll say why. Here we're talking about the customer behavior, all right, and customer decision making. So fear, fear. So let me just finish and then I'll get to you because you do raise something relevant and for business management as well. So for me to be considering possible solutions. It's off of something that I know is available. Does that make sense? So this is me as a customer or here an institution, a business as a customer, right? Because it can be a business as a customer, or it can be an individual. Does that make sense? So the illustration you're giving is where you are a business and you have a product, right? That can solve a potential problem, right? But you're withholding that because you're obviously profiting off of an existing product in the market. Can you see it? It's not the same same thing. Yeah. So on the on the consumer side, okay. we're talking about just the fear because the fear is what makes me want to buy that medication and then I die. For COVID nineteen, yeah, uh, people are running to go get vaccines out of fear. And there was sales for someone else. Okay. So from the, the consumer's point of view, fear yeah. is pure. So you're 100% right. Fear can be a motivation for me as a customer to make a purchase of a product. But I'd love to take us through the actual uh, steps, speaking to your problem. Oh, sorry, your, uh, what you just highlighted for us. So guess what? This pandemic has just arrived. We weren't aware of it. All the news outlets are now making us aware of COVID-19. Now we have awareness that there is a problem. And people are dying as a result of this problem. All right? Then we gather information on what are the best solutions. Either we stay away, we wear masks, right? Or we also can get a vaccine which helps our immune system to fight off this disease. And you see, we're assessing the solutions. All right? Then you um, obviously evaluate these possible solutions, right? Then you make a decision. Not everybody got vaccinated. Some got vaccinated. All right. Others used other remedies uh, when they got COVID-19. Okay. That's your decision. Okay. And then obviously, um, we've heard on YouTube, uh, I don't know it to be factual. Some people have uh, experienced certain things as a result of having the vaccine or taking certain you know, ETC, ETC, the list can go on. Now that's our post purchase evaluation to say, was it a good idea to get vaccinated or not? Okay, so I'm just using the illustration you gave and trying to contextualize it. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, 100%. Okay, so we were here now and we we're just talking to, did I skip, I think I skipped the slide. No, I didn't, okay. Yes, it's old age guys. Uh, so market segmentation, I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, all right? Here we're talking about, obviously, we have a market for our product, but within that total market or that big market, there might be smaller markets. So for instance, if we think of education, there's a market for education, but then we have a tertiary market, we have a high school market, we have a primary market, and then we obviously have cred and so forth, so forth. All right, and then here we're obviously talking uh, to total market can be subdivided into customer market, industrial market, resale market, and then obviously the government market, okay? So these are different uh, customers, okay? And then steps to follow when segmenting a market, identifying the needs, okay? Because the different potential customers in the market, their focus is different. Does it make sense? And your primary students are just trying to learn how to read and write. You guys are here for a certificate, a certificate that's going to make you relevant for the 
labor market. Does that make sense? The needs are different. So we have to obviously provide different products and obviously market differently to these different segments, okay? Then group needs are homogeneous subgroups, okay? Obviously, all of those in the tertiary space, the needs or the, 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 the needs are similar, okay? So we can market to you guys the same for the most part. And then select target markets. We don't need to always service everybody within the total market. And then position product within market segment. Okay, right. All right, and then there, it's just a lovely diagram describing the different approaches that we can take, all right, with our market segmentation, all right? And then requirements for meaningful market segmentation. For segmentation to be meaningful, segment must be identifiable and measurable. Sustain, uh, sorry, substantial and sub sustainable. And then it must also be reachable, all right? Remember, we're talking about for the market to be meaningful to us as a business. If we can't reach it, then there's no point in us wasting any time discussing it or considering it as a market that we can service, okay? And then it must be responsive, okay? If you know these guys are not going to listen to our offering, they are premiums, then there's no point. It's not meaningful. It's not a meaningful segment to us as a business. Uh, then they go on to say, once requirements have been met, by a segment the segment can then be selected as a target market okay and then this is the last slide that we will be looking at am i telling the truth or am i lying i'm lying okay but i think this is self-explanatory i don't need to dwell on it right you can see the criteria for market segmentation you've got geographic demographic all right all there for you okay so just take note of that and then find it. And now I'm not lying, this is the last slide. Target market selection and positioning. And I think all that we need to read on that slide is in that head. Now that we've established that this is a target market, we can then obviously select it or select the ones that we want and then obviously begin to position ourselves to our marketing communication. Okay? Now we are and you know yeah now we're done you can't see so do me a favor eh? should i be nice okay so take a picture of that <laughs> 